Last week, Taylor Swift dropped her much-awaited 10th studio album called Midnight. Of course, fans have already started coming up with theories about the pop icon's newest record and collecting all of the easter eggs that Taylor has become so well known for. Every number, every word, every letter of anything included in the album is immediately dissected by fans, and sometimes these theories can get a little out of hand. After only one week, Twitter and TikTok are already teeming with ideas about the hidden meanings of the tracks. So what do you think that people have missed? Let's get into it. I'm your host Bridget Shield, and here are the top 10 Taylor Swift Midnight's fan theories that blew our mind. Number 10, The Lavender Theory. We know that Lavender Haze is the title of the first track on Midnight's, and the word lavender is frequently used as a symbol of the queer community. It doesn't help that for years there's been speculation that Taylor is either gay or bisexual, and has had secret relationships with women. Not only that, but some people were convinced at least two and possibly more songs on the album are about Carly Kloss, the model she became friends with after they met in 2013, until they had a falling out. In the song Maroon, she says, How'd we end up on the floor anyway? You say your roommate's cheap screw top rosé. Taylor and Carly were reportedly roommates at one point. There was also speculation that the song Question could be about her as well, as one fan theorized that it definitely feels pretty straightforward that she's singing about kissing a girl. In 2014, TMZ reported that the two of them may or may not have kissed at a concert, although that was never fully confirmed. Number 9, John May. People believe that the 19th track from Midnight's called Would've, Could've, Should've is about Taylor's relationship with her ex John Mayer. She was only 19 years old when she dated the singer, who was 32 at the time. This was way back in the late 2000s. So it might not be a coincidence at all that it's the 19th track on the special edition version of her album. The lyrics give it all away. She says, I would've stayed on my knees and damn sure I never would've danced with the devil at 19. And the God's honest truth is that the pain was heaven, which is pretty pretty damning evidence. Although John has yet to publicly respond to the song, he has called out Taylor for her lyrics in the past. Back in 2012, he told Rolling Stone that he was really humiliated by her song called Dear John and expressed his resentment saying, I didn't deserve it. I'm pretty good at taking accountability now and I never did anything to deserve that. It was a really lousy thing for her to do. As for Taylor's reaction, she said, how presumptuous. I never disclose who my songs are about. Number 8, Secret Lost Album. Taylor recently announced that track 11 on Midnight's would be titled Karma, which fits neatly into the Karma theory, which runs as follows. There is a secret unreleased Taylor Swift album titled Karma that was supposed to come out in 2016. This hypothetical album, fans believe, was scrapped following the infamous Kim Exposed Taylor party, when Kim K released excerpts of tapes that appeared to catch Swift in a messy public lie, and the public rapidly turned on her. Fans believe that the Karma song on Midnight's will be an unreleased track from the secret scrapped Karma album and likely a diss track aimed directly at Kanye West as his reputation continues to plummet. Not to mention that in the music video for The Man, the camera pans over a graffitied wall tagged with the titles of Taylor Swift's album and the word karma which appears twice on the wall. Next to one of the karma tags is a sign that says, Missing, if found, return to Taylor Swift. Number 7, Scooter Braun. Fans believe that one of the many easter eggs in Taylor's music video for Bejeweled is about her drama with Scooter Braun and Big Machine Records over the rights to her first single. Six albums. If you didn't know, Scooter Braun essentially stole Taylor's own music from her and sold the master rights to her first six albums in a deal worth $300 million. Since the scandal broke in Taylor's own words, the public knows him to be an incessant, manipulative bully. In the video, Taylor plays kind of like a Cinderella character alongside her three ugly stepsisters, as she can be seen cleaning the floor around them. One Twitter user by the name of Abs wrote, House wench Taylor has been exiled from her kingdom, aka rights to her masters, by the people who she trusted, aka Scooter Braun and Scott, after being sold a fairy tale. When the sisters leave to go get ready, they say, let's go get our jewels. And these villains think selling the masters will pay off. However, Taylor has a plan to reclaim them. Number 6, Joe Alwyn. Taylor's song, Lavender Haze, is filled with feminist symbolism and explores her feelings of being not only a woman in a heteronormative relationship, but also being famous on top of that. In the song, Taylor reveals that she was referring to the never-ending speculation that she and Joe are engaged, secretly married, or planning to have children. She says, All they keep asking me is if I'm going to be your bride. The only kind of girl they see is one night or a wife. This line is a direct reference to something called the Madonna Complex, which describes the patriarchal idea that women can only be one of two stereotypes, pure and chaste maternal figure, or a promiscuous and untrustworthy sex object. In regards to her six-year relationship with Joe, Taylor has said that they have to ignore weird rumors and tabloid stuff in order to protect 
like the real stuff. I think a lot of people have to deal with this now, not just public figures, because we live in the era of social media. If the world finds out that you're in love with somebody, they're going to weigh in on it. Number five, the clock theory. Another idea that's taking social media by storm is that the track titles for midnights could be named after hours in the early morning. One tweet read, what if the tracks are hours and time? Track one is 1 a.m. and so on. And track 13 is falling asleep and Taylor meeting herself. Fans quickly realized that the artwork to some of her songs on Spotify had been replaced with the animation of a clock ticking towards midnight. And of course, everyone is convinced that that's another Easter egg. The numbers on the clock are separated into five colors. So this could also correspond to her different album errors. Now, Taylor did reveal that the album is basically the story of 13 sleepless nights that she's had throughout her life. She wrote, this is a collection of music written in the middle of the night, a journey through terrors and sweet dreams, the floors we pace and the demons we face. For all of us who have tossed and turned and decided to keep the lanterns lit and go searching, hoping that maybe, just maybe, when the clock strikes 12, we'll meet ourselves. Number four, Kim and Kanye feud. Many are speculating that the track titled Vigilante includes references to Taylor's infamous feuds with Kanye West and his ex Kim Kardashian. 2016 phone call between Taylor and Kanye transfixed the world. When Kim published three minutes of it on Snapchat, all to paint Taylor as a liar. In fact, you don't have to be a hardcore fan to know that their beef actually dates back to when Kanye interrupted her at the 2009 MTV VMAs and it just went downhill from there. In her new song, Taylor sings about revenge and getting even. Others have speculated that she is also referring to Kim and Kanye's messy divorce in 2021. The lyrics go, now she gets the house, gets the kids, gets the pride. Picture me thick as thieves with your ex-wife. And she looks so pretty, driving in your bend. Lately, she's been dressing for revenge. It's almost like she's taunting Kanye because according to TMZ, Kim is actually going to be walking away from the divorce with their $60 million Hidden Hills home. And we all know that Kim drives a Benz. Number three, Lord. Another Easter egg is from Antihero and it's about Taylor's friendship with Lord and how her fame has negatively affected her personal relationships. Speaking about the song, she said, I really don't think I've delved this far into my insecurities in this detail before. I struggle with the idea that my life has become unmanageably sized and I just struggle with the idea of not feeling like a person. In the video, Taylor literally transforms into a giant that will inevitably destroy her surroundings when she has to crawl around inside of a little house. The lyrics go, sometimes I feel like everybody is a sexy baby and I'm a monster on the hill. Too big to hang out, slowly lurching toward your favorite city. Fans think this is a direct reference to a quote from her friend Lord, who once compared Taylor's level of fame to an autoimmune disease. She said, it's like having a friend with very specific allergies. There are certain places you can't go together, certain things you can't do. There are these different sets of considerations within the friendship, which is actually quite sad when you think about it. Number two, body image. Fans didn't have to dig very deep to realize that Taylor's song Antihero also deals with the theme of self-loathing. Unfortunately, the video was extremely controversial upon its release. The scene that angers some viewers shows Taylor in the bathroom weighing herself on a scale as her inner critic and alter ego looks on. A close-up of the scale shows the word fat written on it instead of a number, and then she shakes her head in disappointment. The new version of the video no longer cuts to that word, a moment that some body positivity advocates said reinforce negative connotations with the word fat. When the song first dropped, Taylor tweeted, watch my nightmare scenarios and intrusive thoughts play out in real time. The singer has been open in the past about her struggles with body image and that she's had an eating disorder. In her Netflix documentary, Miss America, she admits that unflattering pictures and unkind comments about her figure would sometimes trigger her to starve a little bit and just stop eating altogether. And coming in at number one, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. We know that Taylor revealed the name of Blake and Ryan's third child, Betty, in a song of the same name, which was featured on her eighth album, Folklore. And now fans are theorizing that Taylor has secretly revealed what her friend's fourth child will be called. The couple does have another baby on the way, who fans now think is said to be named Daisy May. A lyric in Taylor's new track titled You're On Your Own Kid actually includes a reference to someone named Daisy May. The lyrics go, I see the great escape, so long Daisy May. I pick the pedals, he loves me not, something different different bloom. Writing in my room, I play my songs in the parking lot, I'll run away. One Twitter user wrote, calling it now, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds' baby is going to be named Daisy May. Hashtag Midnight's Taylor Swift. And another one said, I love coming to Twitter to confirm things like, yes, other people also think that Daisy May is the name of Blake Lively's baby. Hashtag Midnight's Taylor Swift. So yeah, it's entirely possible that Taylor has already dropped the baby's name. Well, that's everything that we have on the list. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.